Hey everyone, Adam here, so was your podcast. I have another interview for you today. Uh, I got to sit down with Anya and Kelsey from Glass House. Uh, Anya was the lead actress. Kelsey directed the movie. Uh, I believe wrote and directed the movie. Uh, Glass House is a really cool indie uh, thriller, sci-fi indie thriller. It's got a little bit of, you know, mixed elements in there. I really liked this movie. Um, the, color, the cover art was a little bit off-putting to me personally. It looked like it was just going to be another run-of-the-mill slasher. It is anything but... Uh, I have a full review on it on our YouTube channel already, so make sure you check that out if you're curious. Glass House is available now, but this is also a really cool interview to be able to talk to not only a couple creatives, but it's a South African movie, and it's always interesting to me to get those just subtle cultural changes. You know, it's not like they reinvented the wheel making movies down there or anything, but it's just different enough that it's cool to get into other processes and talk to people who maybe are not in our regular circles of creators because it's such a different world. Uh, anyway, it was a great interview. Uh, it's a really cool movie, so enjoy the interview. Make sure you check out the movie. It's uh, one of the, my favorite uh, screeners, one of my favorite indies that I've seen this year. So here it is. Any second now. There it is. Hey, everyone. Adam here. So was your podcast. I'm sitting down with Anya Talyard and Kelsey Egan to talk about their newest movie, Glass House. Uh, how are the both of you doing? Hi, great. Thanks and you. Yeah, this is uh this is gonna be fun. Uh the movie was amazing. You know, I'm not gonna beat around the bush for people listening. <laughs> I'll do a review video too, but I absolutely loved it. So we're gonna have a ton to talk about. Um, I guess first, Kelsey, since you wrote and directed, where did you get your original ideas for it? Well, it seems surreal now to even say this, but we came up with the concept before we had any idea that COVID-19 was going to have such a huge impact on the world, my amazing co-writer, Emma Lindisa and Devet and I um, were getting together and coming up with concepts to pitch to Showmax in February, 2020. And at that point, I think I'd read like one news article out of China, but I figured it was going to be another SARS situation. Um, and it just wasn't on our radar. And we came up with the concept um, with regards to memory because it's very personal to both Emma and I. She has a family member who suffered from dementia. I've had a family member who suffered from severe short-term memory loss. And it's, it's impacted us on a personal level. And I think we were really interested in exploring memory's um, importance to identity and forming and shaping who you are and what happens if the memories that you have are actually heavier than you can bear. Okay, yeah, that's a... A very heavy concept, and it's also kind of crazy that <clears throat> you came up with this. I mean, everything now that has to do with disease or sheltering, even though we've been making these movies forever, you know, you have to look at it through a new lens. So your exactly. timing was kind of perfect in a lot of ways, a, a lot of sad ways, but a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we I ended up writing the script in the first South African lockdown, like on, on this balcony, actually, with Emma on Zoom. And I was in lockdown alone, just, so she was like my lifeline. And so it, it ended up being this very surreal, like life imitating art uh, scenario. Yeah, seriously. That probably helped you really tap into what was going on in the movie. Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Anya, how, how did this come across your desk? Um, basically, I've, I've got my agent that represents me um, in South Africa and just got like a really like... Um, uh, excited email kind of the one, uh, or call actually I think they called me um, both they emailed and called uh, just saying like listen this is something that's like really super urgent can you get the self tapes in by end of tomorrow um, they really need to just like start like um, uh, casting their lead characters and they've been searching for a while with no luck and um, yeah, I just essentially canceled like everything I had the next day and just immediately, <laughs> your cat is adorable. Yeah. Um, Amazing cameo. Immediately, <laughs> so immediately like, started working on the self tapes and um, try to get it to them as soon as possible. Um, interestingly enough, I auditioned um, for both Evie and B. Um, that was like a, a, an amazing part of their casting process as to just like obviously make sure that the cast just like went really, really, really well together. Um, which they were so brilliant at, but that's good. We can talk about that later. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just like, I think, I don't know how long after I sent in my tapes, uh, possibly like a week or two, kind of like had a Zoom um, call with, with Kals and Emma 
with them basically just saying like they absolutely loved um you know my first proposal of this character and felt like I really understood the character and um couldn't like give me a distinctive yes yet but it looked positive and they were just it was yes in our minds it was yes in their minds but we were still waiting for confirmation from like (laughs) the big guys everyone else (laughs) yeah yeah so the powers that be so um once we had that confirmation yeah everything is kind of just like history um after that but it was like it was yeah it was tense just waiting for that confirmation especially knowing that like Emma and Carl's both like really really loved me and wanted me for the part it would have been really sad if it came back and it was like a no that would have broken my heart <laughs> but it didn't have, no at that stage we were pretty confident we wouldn't have messed with your your mind like that yeah no, no, no. I don't <laughs> think they would have you, we wouldn't have had that phone call um no. if you guys didn't like think uh, yeah we're positive no. about it as well. yeah yeah, yeah. That's a, a really quick timeline from writing in early 2020. I mean, just have a finished product now, like only two and a half years it's, later, let alone making it. Adam, it's like, it's insane. And it's a dream come true because the first, the project I thought and was working towards being my future directorial debut was a script I wrote nine years ago. And that was supposed to go in 2019. And then a yeah. piece of the financing fell away at the last minute. So I went into 2020 in a very dystopian state of mind <laughs> um, and sort of like pitched these concepts, just hoping I would have something to like, you know, could get paid to write something while I was trying to refinance or repackage this other project. And then Showmax came back to us green lighting a three picture slate. They chose like, three concepts. We were just hoping for one. And I spent the next four months writing and then was shooting Glass House in November, which, you know, was mind blowing. You know, after working like for a better part of a decade, just trying to get the opportunity to direct your first feature and then have something happen so quickly. It was it was a dream come true. It's probably the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I say that sincerely. <laughs> yeah, that's an amazing turnaround of, of fortunes. Yeah. and. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, a quick offshoot, that script you've been working on for a decade, is that still in play somewhere? <laughs> That's why I was late for this interview. Oh, excellent. I'm, okay. I'm, I, we, 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 managed, we managed to shoot it uh, in November last year, and I'm in post-production now. Oh, that's amazing. Well, congratulations yeah, again. Thank you. No, it's here. <laughs> it's Everything's just, working I'm, out. <laughs> I'm very, very grateful. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so you write it quickly you cast it quickly Anya you audition in 24 hours <laughs> everything's <laughs> super truncated which um, was by the way one of the best self tapes I've ever seen no oh, oh excellent <laughs> yeah, no, she, she, she killed this like she just knew Evie she changed I just was beginning. Yeah. I was she so did. so not even like just attracted to the script but like just so oh involved from like the first moment I picked up the script and like started reading it I was I feel like I was already so involved with Evie and I really had to like calm myself down and not get my hopes up because obviously you do like 100 auditions you're lucky if you get one job do you know what I mean yeah. so I didn't want to get like too attached but like from the very first moment it was just one of those things where I just knew like I was like I have to get this role I have to have the opportunity to do this because I felt so attached to it so I think yeah, um, and I know a lot of people, you end up feeling like that about a lot of things and you don't end up getting to do it. But I think this just worked out in the best possible way for me. <laughs> I was like, I do it. Um, I'm, which I'm, to do it. I'm super grateful for and I'm so grateful. I'm a young, you know, I'm a young actress. No one knows me. So the fact that they gave me the opportunity to just even audition for it was like, I'm so grateful for that. That's really good. Are you used, were you used to the self-tapings pre-COVID or was that a necessity of everything? I no pre COVID. I think it was like super rare that you 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 got self tapes every now and again, but that would be like predominantly like if by like for some reason you know the clients or like they're all like overseas or something and like yeah like pilot like, season or yeah. something and like that. Almost- yeah, stuff like that. Like, it's the only method of like them being able to see you. So it was like a last resort type of thing. Whereas when we went into COVID, it became like the only method. Mm-hmm. So I feel like everyone really, really quickly had to like r- really get used to how to be able to do a good tape. Um, that obviously goes into like lighting, just you know, exactly like placement, all that type of stuff, getting like good readers to help you. So um, yeah, we, we had to really like jump and like get into that like sense of how to do that really, really quickly. Um, so obviously like I did something right with my self tapes as well. <laughs> I was able to like give good performances because obviously if your tape is – looks bad you're not in focus you have horrible sound it all takes away from your performance and ultimately you can't get that strong performance across so yeah I think I had to try and make sure that everything was tip top 
<laughs> yeah, you had a lot more factors to learn about. A lot of exactly. Yeah, right. you suddenly you become like you're not an actress anymore. Now you're crew, <laughs> and you want to make sure he's running smoothly. <laughs> the power of lighting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, but the problem is also you're shooting from home, so you've got unexpected noise. You've got children living next door screaming, and like <laughs> cats meowing. Every, and a every dog time, meowing. every time I need to do a self tape or like an interview <laughs> situation, without fail, there's construction from my balcony. Oh, and yeah. it's just like, <laughs> and, and I've like, always got like balcony. someone's house alarm going off. Someone's bloody house alarm. Every time I do a self tape, an alarm goes off. I'm like, surely they can't be breaking in every day, guys. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> so are the self tapes still pretty predominant? Did did the business kind of like, oh, we we like this convenient. Let's just keep doing it. Yeah. Well, if I yeah. find, yeah, I think I'm doing like at least a couple of self tapes in a month. Yeah. Oh. It, it's good for us too from the other side of things it, it really helps and then we bring in you know in you can't beat in person for chemistry reads but you can do that stage of the process a bit later after you've done an initial review it's really helpful yeah, yeah i think that I've, i tend to go in like when i do a lot of self tapes i tend to like uh, they'll have us in studio for if it's callbacks like Carl's just said, but like, um, or in studio reading, like if they, if they really like you, but otherwise I think it makes it easier. Just that like initial process of, I know it sounds horrible, but just weeding every out, everyone that you're not really interested in and like, like, um, not having everyone go through the effort of like getting to the studio and like, you yeah, know, honestly, the hardest stuff. thing about casting yeah. really is that there are too many incredibly talented people and you end up feeling really mm -hmm. guilty that you don't have enough roles yeah. for them. Mm -hmm. I think that's like, that's the, that's the hardest thing with Glasshouse. We, we, it was really important to Emma and I that we didn't just go out to the obvious choices. We wanted everyone to have a chance to, to cast. Like we really did a very wide um, net brief to all the agencies all around the country. Yeah. So um, it was really important to us to give everyone a shot. And then we got hundreds of tapes and, it's, you know, it's heartbreaking because you want to be able to cast more people, but it's also a good learning experience for future because you see like who it might fit into a role you have coming up. Yeah, that's interesting too, because now you kind of have a record of all these talented people where maybe you could yeah. reach out more specifically in your next project. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for uh, this movie, uh, Anya, your character, you're in virtually every scene, like you're shouldering a lot. And mm -hmm. as a relatively new actress, did you find that to be intimidating? And I guess, Kelsey, kind of the other side of the same coin, taking somebody relatively new in their career, did you find it was going to be a lot to put on them? I guess, Anya, if you want to start. Um, I think I initially, I didn't even think of how, in, like, I think I only kind of realized like once we were on set and like we got our schedule and I was like, I don't have a single day off. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Not only that, it's it's uh, incredibly, a lot of it's incredibly emotional. So at the end of the day, you might be doing like four or five emotional scenes in a row and you end up being so exhausted. Um, so I think like as we were doing it, I was like, oh my God, I'm in the middle of it. Like <laughs> I kind of realized, um, but I think it was a, an insanely amazing challenge. Um, and that's kind of as actors, like at the end of the day, that's what we love and like we we appreciate those challenges because that's how we grow and we better ourselves um and as you grow as a human being you, your perspective of the world and people and your experiences grow as well so it only makes you in the end it only leaves you better off so i think um yeah i didn't initially realize like how hectic it would be but it ended up like yeah it ended up being like very challenging in a lot of ways but like in the best way possible i think we got I mean, for the biggest gift to, for a director, I think, is just working with a cast that's willing to bring everything. That like no, no note is too challenging or, 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 or not worth trying. Everything's worth trying. Everything's worth push, pushing that little bit further, or trying that different choice. And this cast was so giving in that way. Um, and we were trying to get a lot of, um, really get a lot of subtleties to read across multiple characters in the same scene and making sure we got those little beats and those interactions that we would have as much um, room and edit as possible to make sure that certain nuances were conveyed when they were. And yeah. oftentimes that required trying a couple of different tactics or approaches to a scene or really pushing certain things to make sure that it would be what it needed to be when compared to the other material we had. So, and everyone was so like, everyone was just so game. I think that was the thing. We were all so game and, and that mm -hmm. made it such a, um, 
a re rewarding experience because yeah. you know when you're like just everyone's giving their all it's really special mm. It didn't like didn't matter how exhausted we were or like if you felt like yeah. you couldn't keep going, you were just like you just Everyone like Everyone found a way. Yeah. Bring it up. Yeah. And we just like kept going. And we we also knew like we had only a certain amount of time to get this thing done. So you don't want to be that one person that's like the person that just can't like suck it up and like just get it done because everyone else is getting it done. So we were like amazing in motivating each other in that way as well, I think. Yeah. Everyone really needed to be prepared but it was yeah. such a it was again I'm just going to go back to the life imitating art thing because mm. the glass house itself beautiful but it was a very claustrophobic environment we were sort of living um this parallel life and also the our shoot location in the eastern cape was declared a hot spot a, like a week or two after we got there so we were completely yeah. bubbled as cast and crew because we were so worried about COVID and we had all the protocols we were following and and it was um, it was that that added another level of like suffocation and intensity to the whole process. Um, but I think it I think it I, I'm not going to say it was the worst thing because I think we were living. I think it's while we were shooting. Yeah, I 100 percent think it like pushed all of us to create like the best possible project that we could have. Well, we we're also so grateful that we were even doing something. Because we'd all been yeah, in lockdown true. for like months before. So I think that it was like that's the first job anyone had done since. I was about you know, to say, like, we were all there like, saying like, how well, lucky we are to be able to be on set right now. Because like, we know for a fact, everyone else is at home stuck, yeah. not being able to do anything because there's just no jobs at the moment. Yeah. 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 And it's a credit to show Max to get, because that they were trying to get stuff yeah. to actually happen. Because, you know, a lot of people were struggling. They've been out of work for months. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's really cool the timeline how it worked out because I've seen a lot of movies made around that time where you can tell that they had to make it in a bubble and things that should have been bigger were not. But since you got to write it right on the on onset, you kind of had an idea, maybe not fully, but an idea of what was going on. So you could write around it where it was part of your story and the movie never feels it never feels like it's stuck here because it's stuck. It feels like that's the movie. That's a that's the best compliment you could give Adam. We were we were writing for a very low budget. We were trying to go contained, um, and we did this very naughty thing that you're never supposed to do, where you write a screenplay mm -hmm. for a location <laughs> that we didn't even know we could get. Um, but Emma grew up in the Eastern Cape. She visited Pearson Conservatory where we shot as a child, and she showed it to me. Is like this is where this needs to be, and we were like, oh my word, this is incredible. It's a real Victorian glass house imported from the UK about a hundred years ago and and preserved and we uh we had in our minds the whole time we were shoot we were writing the script what was the most amazing thing is that when i went and flew there for the first time for the location scout the initial scout we found the tree that was written in the script that we didn't know existed we didn't know if we would be able to find a tree that the girls could have a blind in and climb up and as an outlook and when I saw that tree, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is it. Like, we could not have gotten more lucky. Like, not be. only do we get the glass house, do we get to shoot Pearson's, but they have the tree. Because that tree was so yeah. pivotal to the story. Yeah, and it, started, it was so perfectly placed as well. Yeah, it was couldn't have been yeah, better. That's incredible. Is, is there any sign that maybe because of the lockdown, that building was available when it might not have been in, like, early 2019? They have, it's, it's quite a tourist attraction. So a lot, like, a, I, apparently a lot of people like to do weddings there or rent it out for um, functions. And they were a little bit worried that it was going to get too busy um, because we were going into, like, we were going properly into the holidays when we were wrapping up. But the Eastern Cave Tourism Board was just incredibly supportive and they, they worked around us and they were, they, I think they were also very excited that we were shooting something there. Um, and we were really excited to be there. So it, it was, we got a lot of support and, you know, exceptionally grateful for that. They, they even have like um, fences around it normally to protect it. And we took those mm -hmm. down for our shoot. Yeah. I guess that is something you'd want to protect an imported hundred year old glass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was like something like three. There were three of those um, identical to each other, important, uh, imported yeah. to different this is, I think this is the only one that's survived. It's the last one standing. The other two yeah. have been broken down. Yeah. Something wow. happened to those. Yeah. 
It's just crazy hearing how many things <laughs> fell into place for your movie to oh, come out how it did. It was a miracle. Like, but yeah. but that's I think I honestly think that's true for any movie. I mean, like, well, as yeah. we can, you know, like I, or like Jess who played B. She got mm-hmm. out of the UK the day like we got our visa the day before the visa office shut down, or like the last day they were open when the UK went back into lockdown. I had to call her the same Jess day. Yeah, I think the same, same day. You guys we were like, and you were like, you have two hours left to get to the visa yeah. office. They're closing in two hours. You have to go like, right. I'm like, what are you doing right now, Jess? Are you free? Please tell me you're free because you have to be at the visa <laughs> office in two hours. And, it, you know, and it wasn't because it was, we had thought we had till next week, but all of a sudden the UK was like, no, we're going back into lockdown. We're closing. And we're like, what? What is happening? So it was a miracle that she got into the country. I mean, it was just, yeah, it was it was a wild ride. But I'm I'm so mm. proud of everyone because everyone brought it. That's the thing, like in front of the camera, behind the camera, you know, in in prep and pre production, not just on screen. Yeah. Everyone worked so hard to pull this off. Mm. Was your crew smaller than it normally would have been, even for this exact movie? It was it was it was um, it was a bit smaller, but it was also a bit smaller because we it was such a low budget shoot, right? Um, but we got exceptional support. I have to give a shout out to Afton in the, in, in the Eastern Cape because their their um, faculty really really came to the party, and they had a, we had a number of Afton students who were, ended up being pretty much full time on our crew as a yeah. as a practical experience and. That was, it's the first feature they've ever worked on and our experienced HODs did an incredible job mentoring them and taking them under their wing and showing them on the ropes. And that was also a very cool thing. It ended up being quite a, a, a unique training opportunity. That's really awesome. Another thing that <laughs> falls into place really cool. Yeah. Uh, how long was the shoot? Four weeks. Four yeah. weeks? Oh, okay. Yeah, it was fast. Oh, yeah, we, definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had, a, we, had a we had a lot to do in a, a very short amount of time. Yeah, it was 12 hour days. There was, was no, there was no like, oh, we can't, like, we're going to not be able to do the scene today. It was like, we have we these have amounts of scenes to do, to do and we need to do all of them. <laughs> Otherwise, so there was don't. a lot of like, you know, on the fly being like, okay, well, we wanted to shoot it this way, but we're not going to have time to do that. So we're going to shoot it this way. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. You have this like beautiful shot list that you do in prep and you're like, this is the dream. And then you're like, on the day, you're like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Scratch <laughs> that. Not, not doing that. But no, yeah. we, we t- but to be fair, we actually did get very much. Um, I would say there isn't anything I can think of that we didn't get that I wanted. I'm, I, yeah. everything works. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really proud. It was probably a scenario where you couldn't, oh, we missed this. We have to go back and get it. There probably was none of that. No, not on this film. Yeah. yeah. There, but there always is. Like, there's certainly things where, like, ooh. <laughs> but, but, we, <laughs> but the whole team was working together really closely. And so we had, a, like, a day of pickup shots on our last shoot day where we had a B camera organized after helped us with that as well. And my amazing producers, like Greg Buckle and Emma, were running around, like, doing um, B unit with my editor and, like, getting grabbing all the stuff that they knew because Rowan had been with us cutting for the um, for the four weeks. So we had, we had an idea of what we kind of needed that was a bit like, mm, we should really grab this. And so they were running around grabbing stuff while I was finishing the last shoot day. It was madness. Oh, that's really cool though. So you're kind of editing on the fly to make sure everything was there. Yeah. Yeah. We, cause we knew we couldn't afford to miss something. So yeah. Rowan was a lifesaver um, with that. Rowan Jackson did a great job. Anya, did you find that? Um, I don't know if difficult too strong of a word, but how did you find it? with the constant, I guess probably not rewrites, but the kind of changing things as you went, because you probably rehearsed and had it in your head a certain way. I think um, we didn't have too much rehearsal in terms of like, uh, I would say like beforehand, like blocking or anything. I mean, we had we had a really good, like we really solidified all our characters and our relationships really nicely before we started shooting. Um, but I think, I don't think, I, I didn't really find it difficult because like you said, if we were, when Kelsey says changing things on the fly, I'm not really even always aware. I wasn't even aware of like yeah. what they wanted to do in the first place. Kelsey wants to do. Let's go. Yeah, yeah so this like, was this was camera stuff. They the script didn't change yeah. at all. The script oh, was excellent. like yeah. we didn't change too much of the script. They like they really stuck to um stuck to the original script and storyline. So nothing much changed there. So for us it was kind of like we still came and like obviously you get you get onto the set, you you do your blocking, um, see what works, what doesn't work, da 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 and then you go um so uh, we didn't really like have much awareness of like in terms of what would change a lot about like 
blocking or certain times types of shots that they maybe wanted to get that they weren't able to get and they had to like you know maybe just choose different easier shots um in that moment but we but we were like so blissfully unaware of that we were just like focus stay in it like stay in the scene just do like, run or go and do whatever Carl tells you to do so <laughs> yeah I don't think that was like something that phased us too much uh-uh. sorry my dog's barking i'm oh, sorry <laughs> 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 uh, cool. For the the script, kind of going back, I do things you know as it pops in my head. Sorry, um, mm-hmm. when you're writing something like this, I don't want you to give anything away. I don't want to give anything away to people who are listening to this and haven't seen it yet. But there is a mystery element. Do you figure that out first and then write to it, or did that kind of fall into place as you went? Oh no, we 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 have the whole shape of the story, the whole skeleton before we we flesh it out. Um, so I'll do a scene breakdown before that you'll do a beat sheet. So we know, we always know where we're going. That's what enables us to write so fast. So we conceptualize the whole arc of like every character arc, the the narrative arc, um, what we want to achieve, what we want to explore. And then where we, yeah, we start, we start with a skeleton. I think it's the best way to say it. And then we fill in the flesh. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) It's just always fascinating when there's that many, moving pieces and it just starts to line up and then you think back to earlier things and it's all there and yeah that's a lot of like really really fun creative brainstorming sessions and some note cards and if you're lucky like a whiteboard and you you you, you map it all out in advance and she's like a really complicated connect the dots but it was (laughs) it was was sort of a charmed experience because emma and i just I think from the first scene we wrote, because we alternated writing scenes. I wrote every odd scene. She wrote every even scene. And then we'd swap and we script edit each other's scene. And then we do a polish pass together all on Zoom. And okay. we, we, um, we, but we had the scene breakdown that we'd written together that we were working from when we wrote our scenes. And from the very first scene we wrote, we like fell into having the exact same voice, which is we call write often. So you're used to ch- like moderate like modifying your voice to fit with the other writers. So it's a unified voice, but you find what that unified writer's voice is for the project. And Emma and I, like within the first scene, it was like, we had the voice. We knew the tone. I think this project was so deep in both of our bones. Like we knew what we wanted to say with it. And we, it, we felt it so strongly that it, it really felt like um, a miracle project. It was like the ease with which that script came out and how proud we were of it usually you finish a first draft and you're like, that needs work. (laughs) And we finished this first draft and we were like, holy shit. Basically it was our, yeah. Like we were really, really excited. That's really cool. It's, it's cool that there's no um, hard, hard set rules to how this happens. It just works per project. Yeah. You, I, I think you find what works for you. I mean, I know, that I find it's very helpful to map things out from the get-go and it gives me more freedom when I'm actually writing because I, I, I have an idea of where I'm going. But of course, you know, you within that, you're still making sure that you're being true to the characters, being true to their motivations, what they would do in that situation, what they're trying to achieve and taking that into account in, in, in every scene, um, their needs and wants. So I find the skeleton approach very helpful. I use it for most of my projects. With the movie all happening kind of during the height of COVID and then post-production and stuff, and now that it's coming out where we're kind of getting through on the other side, uh, have you been able to see this with live audiences yet? No. No. Uh (laughs) (laughs) No, we all watched it on like Showmax and stuff. Yeah, I I haven't. I mean, I watched it so many times when I was in post that I was like, I can't watch it again. (laughs) And then if we'd had had an in-person premiere, which would have been amazing, I would have. But I missed all of them. They were at festivals that were either remote or I couldn't go. Yeah. Badly. Mm -hmm. No, that's It would have been amazing if we were able to go through to to the festivals. Yeah, but unfortunately... No, we maybe, maybe. I'm, I'm really hoping. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I would love to. I would love to if it works out. But so far, no. Yeah, that's kind of a shame because you put so much into it. Yeah, it's it just, you know, it's a whole new world now. You yeah, know? that's true. I imagine your festival feedback at least has been good. I have never been more in love with critics. Because they've said, I I have to say, like a credit to all of you guys, but like the intelligent things that have been said and taken from the film, because Emma and I, you know, we really hoped certain themes would come across. 
we really hope like, you know, there's an allegory for colonialism and, you know, there's a lot going on as you <laughs> pointed out. And we didn't know who was going to read the people. We were worried we might lose people. And what the, what the reviews and the critics, I mean, not only have people completely tapped in to what we were trying to do, but they, they also have, you know, yeah, the, the, the insights we've gotten in terms of critical feedback has been really humbling. and Yeah. Very grateful. Mm-hmm. Just, it's just, it's such a gift when you want to express something and you're not sure if it will mean as much to other people as it does to you. And then it does resonate in, in the, in, in the way you hoped. It, mm-hmm. it means a lot. That's good that it's coming across to everybody because it did feel very intentional what you were trying to say, but it never came across as message first, movie second, if that makes that's sense. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, th- I mean, that's, that's I think, one of the, the biggest challenges of being a storyteller. You don't want to just do message pieces. Right. I, I want to watch something where I feel like completely absorbed in the world and the characters and care about them. Um, but, you know, you have themes that are personal to you that in sort of exploring as part of the process of living and the human experience. And this, this film very much is a lot of that in there. Mm. We, 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 for the memory thing, I think it's the approach to trauma, right? Like, you know, there's this trope or this idea that if you go through hardship, you'll come out stronger and everything will be okay. But a lot of the times it sticks with you. It doesn't necessarily make you a better person. And having two sisters with two very different approaches to trauma and embracing memory in very different ways as a, as a survival mechanism of what is the right way to live and do um, justice to who you are and what you have done. Um, we were interested in looking at those different coping mechanisms. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool story on those aspects and also the kind of human ad- adaptability uh, yeah. that, for me anyway, that really came through. And it was just it was really incredible all the way through so you know huge credit to both of you and everyone else involved thank you thank you so much i appreciate it absolutely um we're about 30 minutes now so i hate to cut you guys off but i know you're <laughs> both incredibly busy uh, okay. i really appreciate you making the the time change work and everything that was awesome and i'm glad we got to do this because uh, i love the movie and it was a great conversation thank you so much appreciate it absolutely thank you for having us. yeah sure um if you want to give your socials or websites or anything else you want to plug uh, you can just do um, at Kelsey.egan. That's my Instagram account. I'm just at Anya Taliot. <laughs> Tal- I have to say it in an American accent because I keep saying it to my South Africa. Anya Taliard. <laughs> <laughs> very different when I say it with my South African and like my mother in my mother tongue as opposed to when I say it with an American accent, which is just <laughs> more understandable in general. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks again. Congratulations on the movie. And I hope it just keeps working out for you guys. Thank you so much. much. Much appreciated. Thanks for watching. Definitely. Cool. I'd like to thank Anya and Kelsey one more time for coming on the show to talk to me about Glass House. Uh, Like I said, Glass House is available now. This is a big recommend from me. I'm not even going to bury the lead on it. I do hope you go over and watch my review video. Uh, But watch the movie and watch my review video, and then we can talk about what you agreed or disagreed with. Uh, That's the whole fun of talking about movies on the Internet. Please make sure you like and subscribe. We've got a lot more interviews, new movie coverage, uh, comic reviews, unboxings, Amazon screen reviews. Got one of the Amazon screen reviews coming out uh, this Friday for a very appropriate show for our channel. It it fits right in with the audience. A lot of cool stuff coming. You're not going to want to miss out. Uh, Like, subscribe, bell, all the little icons, all the things, whatever it is. Also, make sure you listen to So Is Her Podcast every single week, wherever you get your podcasts. So Is Her Podcast can also be found on Patreon, where for as little as $1 a month, you get multiple monthly bonus shows. So Is Her Podcast.com is your resource for reviews, videos, merchandise, uh, Comic-Con coverage, everything So Wizard, and more. So Is Her Podcast.com. We love hearing feedback, so drop us a note in the comments. There'll be something on social media. All accounts will be found after the show and in the show notes. And as I mentioned, it is con season. Uh, Joey and I will be at Terrific Con at Mohegan Sun in the uh, in New England area. If you're, if you're in the area, stop by, check it out. Let's hang out at the con. Uh, we'll have coverage of that following if you can't make it to the con, so plenty of stuff to check out. And on a more personal note, a good friend and I have an ongoing comedy comic series. It's called Social Studies. It's a slice-of-life, kind of coming-of-age story, but we keep it light, we keep it fun. It's inspired by, and we style it after the Nicktoons that we grew up on inspired us. Nine issues currently available, 10 and 11 coming any day now. Uh, 12's in the works, 13's in the works, 14's being written. 
tons of comics coming, tons of fun to have. You can find it all at socialstudiescomic.com or on Comixology, including Comixology Unlimited, which has been very cool for us. So check it out. Thanks.